And you might say to yourself, well, I don't have 30 minutes twice a day to fit in some walking or some movement and to you know, eat a healthy lunch. And I would say, well, that's where we have to start. Because if you don't have 30 minutes twice a day for you, then of course you're going to resent life. Girl, imagine a life where you feel supported, connected, and understood. I get it. Being a mom is hard, especially when you're spinning so many plates. We exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings. On this podcast, I provide practical and relatable life experiences. I teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab a pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. All right, joining us today is Dr. Stephen Cabral, a board certified doctor of naturopathy. Naturopathy. Am I saying that right, Stephen? Yes, you are. Yes, 100%. <laughs> everybody, everybody gets it confused, so don't worry about it. <laughs> and founder of the Equal Life and the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, and author of the international best selling book, The Rain Barrel Effect. After almost 20 years and over 600,000 pages of research study completed, holy moly, that's a commitment, dozens of certification in the natural health field, over a quarter of a million private client sessions, and a doctoral degree in naturopathy, Dr. Cabral's knowledge, experience, and passion are at the top of his field. Dr. Cabral also has his own podcast called The Cabral Concept. To learn more and to get a free copy of his book, visit stephencabral.com. Hey, Dr. Cabral. Hello. Hello. Great to be on. I appreciate you having me. And uh, that was uh, quite the intro. So thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm super excited to have you on for like 50,000 reasons. Like I mentioned earlier, um, on my daughter's way to school, I asked her, I was like, Mama, you know what? I'm about to interview somebody pretty cool. And I want to know from you, like, what podcast would you want to hear? And as I shared with you, she ended up picking your recent podcast, Alive Versus Dead. And I was like, holy moly, I totally, totally, totally needed that in my life. And in that podcast, you were sharing, you know, a lifetime versus dead time. And I think a lot of us women get caught in the dead time. And it's this, this misinterpretation of believing that that's our lifetime. Can you share a little bit about that? A lifetime versus dead time. Yeah, hundred percent. And a lot of people always are confused when I do a daily podcast, but my Monday podcast is not about integrative health or functional medicine or at-home lab testing. It's about the mindset. Yeah. And that is because, again, just like you, I have a private practice. We work with people all over the world virtually, and we've seen a lot of people. And so we see themes, right? And so the only people we see that don't actually get better from their wellness health-based issue or weight gain-based issue or rapid aging-based issues or the people that end up relapsing because they don't actually believe enough of themselves that they can be well, that they can keep the weight off, that they can live the life that they really want. So I've understood that you know the mind can affect the body, our psychology can affect our physiology, just like our physiology can affect our psychology, our mind. So one of the things that I do is, is I really do a, an intake and say with my team on what's going on with this person's life in, time, in terms of stress and their overall mood and, and any previous trauma. And of course, we'll refer out to great people like yourself as well, because we do the health-based part of it, but not necessarily the mental health. And so one of the things that I just try to teach is that when we look at our overall life, how much of it are we actually enjoying it on a day-to-day -day basis? Because minute to minute, hour to hour, those become our days. And our days become our weeks, and our weeks are months, our months are years, and that becomes our life. So if every day is an uphill struggle for you, it's just not the way that you want to live. And that amount of stress eventually begins to age the body at a much more rapid rate, cause weight gain, cause inflammation, cause disease. So my job in, in that podcast, Alive Time versus Dead Time, was simply to say, 
Think about all of the time times in your day where just the time begins to really pass quickly, where you look up and all of, it, all of a sudden an hour has gone by. And then contra to that is what are the times in your day that you just struggle that every minute seems like it's been an hour? Because if you can try to limit those times any way possible, we can't get rid of all of them, right? We have, that's part of life. And you yeah. can increase the times that you feel alive, even just for a little bit of that time for yourself, you're going to enjoy life that much more. And that's a big step in any direction that you want to take. I love what you, I love how you first um, introduced it as a good amount of people don't believe it's possible. Like we don't believe it's possible. It's possible for my friend or it's possible for you, you know, or it's possible for like celebrities, you know, because they are, they have money. But the truth of the matter is it really starts with you. It really, really does start with you in private practice. The main reason why women don't, don't start or don't start on this new path of, of change is because you know, their main excuse is, I don't have time, Veronica. I don't have time. What am I supposed to do with my kids? Where are they supposed to go? You know, I just, I just had, you know, a couple of clients yesterday tell me that same thing. You know, you want me to start looking into hobbies. You want me to start living the life I want to live when, you know, I have four kids at home and my husband's a firefighter, you know, and he's never home. And, you know, one of them's a baby and you know, I'm still breastfeeding. And it's like, yeah, I get it. I, I get you're busy. Hell, I was you. My husband was actually deployed, though, you know, and he was in Afghanistan. So, yeah, totally get it. And the truth of the matter is I literally had to get off my ass and realize this is not the life I want to live. And I'm starting to resent my husband and I'm looking at my kids with resentment and frustration. And I literally can't do this anymore. I, I can't. I can't five years from now, I'll probably be divorced and I'll run as, as horrible as this sounds, but I would literally want to run away from my kids because I just can't do it anymore. You know, and so many women resonate with that, but it's just taking that step towards change. It's like, I don't know if they need a swift kick in the ass or <laughs> I know it's not that, but it's just, it is possible. So for you, with your specialty, how do you get them over that hump where you help them realize it is possible? Yeah, the, the first, so there's one, the first step is this, just understanding that there are millions, tens of millions, hundreds of people, hundreds of millions of people around the world just like you, but not enough people share what they're going through. And especially with social media, we think everybody's life is all, you know, rainbows and unicorns and sunshine. And we say, okay, well, it's just me. And so the truth is that it's not just you. It's a part of everyone's life. It's just the percentage of time they spend in that space. And in our field, we have to, over, we have to overcome the objection, well, you know, it's just genetic as well. I have Hashimoto's or an autoimmune or weight gain or high blood pressure, high cholesterol, rosacea migraines because my mother or father had it, my grandparents had it, whatever it is. Well, we say, sure, you all have the same genetics. It's true. But 15 years ago, you didn't have this. 20 years ago, you didn't have this. You still have the same genetics. So what happened was... Over time, there's something I call the rain barrel effect. You begin to overflow your rain barrel, where then all of these symptoms come from that. And the only way to reverse that is to empty the rain barrel, and you can do it. So it, it's something called I call the de-stress protocol. Diet, exercise, stress reduction, tox removal, rest, emotional balance, um, supplements based on science, and a success mindset. And you might say, well, I don't have time for all those things. But the truth is, all of those things might take 30 minutes twice a day. And you might say to yourself, well, I don't have 30 minutes twice a day to fit in some walking or some movement and to you know, eat a healthy lunch. And I would say, well, that's where we have to start. Because if you don't have 30 minutes twice a day for you, then of course, you're going to resent life. And you're going to resent everyone that's in your life that you're responsible for. Because if you're responsible for that, even a child, right? Well, then you're going to resent that child because they're taking away your freedom, right? Yeah. Your ability to move around in life. So what do we need to do? This is what I do. Because I was in the same place. Uh, my, I have two young daughters, seven and nine years old. My first daughter was born. I was opening up my second um, location in Boston, Massachusetts. That's a lot of work, hiring over two dozen people, all those different things. But I said, you know, I still have to be present for my family. I need to be present at work for my people, my, my second family, right? My work. But also, I can't 
you know, burnout myself. So what I did was this, I started waking up 60 minutes before the rest of my family did. So if my family wakes up at 6.45 a.m. or 7 a.m., whatever it might be, they wake up around 7 a.m., then I get up at 6. And now that is me time. Maybe it takes me 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get ready for the day. I still have 30 minutes. I can read in that time. I can work out in that time. I could uh, make a healthy breakfast. Whatever it might be, that's my time. And then I try to get that near bedtime as well. And if you can do that, and I have one more time, if you can get a little time at lunch, they can just go for a walk breathe, decompress. We call it moving into the parasympathetic nervous system and out of fight or flight. Everything begins to change because now you realize you have a little bit more control over your life. And that's really what you're looking for. That's so true. I did that this morning. I did that this morning. I woke up and I was like, oh gosh, I can totally use more sleep. And I, I probably got like a good eight hours. The dog's crying downstairs. We have a puppy. Holy crap. I'm not even gonna get into that. Cause that's a whole nother session. Um, I could get up right now. I looked at the time and I was like, okay, I have an hour and ended up getting ready, um, stalling. I'm not going to lie, uh, stalling. And then I started making my way downstairs and it was like, ah, oh, crap. I now only have 40 minutes. Maybe I should go back upstairs and go to sleep. And it was like, no, I, I really need this. My body my body is telling me I need this, mm -hmm. you know, back-to-back -back sessions right now. Um, I have a whole, I have a good amount of firefighters currently on my case, first responders. I'm a whole bunch of trauma, whole bunch of trauma, whole bunch of couples. And I need this for me. I need to decompress. I need, I need to feel good. I need to feel motivated. Music and exercise helps me do that. And by the time I made it downstairs after stalling, I had exactly 33 minutes and it was like, okay, it's game time. And there was a part of me that was like, you know what? It's only 30 minutes. It's not even worth it. You need to build up an hour, you know, and it's not even going to be a good workout. And I got to a point where I was like, screw it. I don't care if it's 30 calories, 50 calories, hundred calories. I'm going to do this for me. And it felt so good. And it reminded me of all of the other times that I did certain things for me, you know, going whenever we would go to the river, paddle boarding by myself. I could still hear the kids far in the distance, but it was paddle boarding for me. And that alone builds confidence. It built this sense of empowerment. It built this sense of identity. Can you tell us your story and how, how you came about doing all of this research? Because I... Most of the time we do these things, these ex us experts and specialists, we do this for us. We figure out a blueprint and then we help others. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and it was no different for me. You know, I, I got sick at 17 years old. I was a senior in high school and I mean, I was playing sports every season, trying to do well in school, just, you know, a normal kid. And, and I was definitely a, you know, type A driven personality. Uh, and that led to part of the overall stress on my body, right? I was working, I was, you know, doing sports. I was doing all these different things that a normal high school kid would do, just taking it to like that next level and just overdoing it. But I was also a sick kid. I would, you know, I had allergies, a little asthma and food sensitivities, which we didn't know about. But then I had a little mild acne when I was a teenager and my dermatologist put me on amoxicillin. So I was on amoxicillin for three years straight, twice a day. And for anybody who doesn't know, when you take antibiotics, it can cause what's called gut dysbiosis or an imbalanced um, intestinal tract because you're killing a lot of the bad bacteria, but you're also killing good bacteria. Okay. And what happens is the yeast that's normally there then begins to really overgrow. And it can cause something called intestinal permeability, which means the foods you eat now, even if they're healthy, they begin to, proteins begin to move in your bloodstream and it causes all sorts of immune-based reactions. So what happened was, and again, they didn't know this at 17 years old, I woke up and my entire immune system was basically shutting down. I had swollen glands uh, all over my whole body. They were basically the size of like limes on the side of my neck. Holy um, boy, your parents must have been freaking out. They were, yes. And I immediately <laughs> went uh, to the doctors. And then that was uh, six months of a battery of tests, doctor, doctor, specialist, specialist, over two dozen different people. And sure, they found some mild things like acid reflux and some elevated white blood cells, but they had no idea what was wrong with me. And so finally, two years later, this is in the late 90s, so we didn't have the internet, any of these things, we got introduced to natural health or alternative medicine. Yeah. And then we started doing 
some at-home lab testing to look at my adrenals, to look at my gut health, to look at food sensitivities, to look at all these things. And it was a whole new world. And of course, I was very skeptical in the beginning because, again, we're just saying, well, this is what our medical doctor said. And if they didn't suggest it, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, well, to make an even longer story shorter, <laughs> I was able to completely heal all of the diagnosed diseases I was later given. So I was diagnosed with Addison's disease, type 2 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, oh hot my syndrome, mild encephalomyelitis, many other issues. So what happened was I was given a lot of medication for those things. Of course. When the internet came about in the year 2000 or so, when we had it, I realized that people on these medications, they didn't live a very long or healthy life. So I became determined. I just doubled down on my reading, my education, meeting with other practitioners. Uh, I was able to rebalance my body. And then I went back to school, got my degree and now I'm sharing it with the world. So that was always my goal. You know, it was probably, again, we, we probably have similar backgrounds in this natural health-based field, psychology and physiology, where if you find out something, you don't want others to suffer from the same thing. And it took me 10 years to get better when really it should have taken maybe four to six months. And, and that's the thing. We go to professionals because we're under the impression that, well, they know what's best. Very rarely do we do our own research. You know, um, I agree with you. For me personally, it took me 10 years to figure out who the hell I was. I was so caught up in being a wife, a mother, and all of those other roles. I didn't know who I was. And I wasn't willing to admit it at the time until it became a little bit too much. And it was like, okay, I need to do something different. And yeah, it took me similar to you. It took me 10 years and some really bad therapists. I hate to say that, but it, it some really horrible therapists. And when I got into the field, it was, I vowed that I wasn't going to do that same thing. You know, I was going to go ahead and do something different and really listen and really understand what people were going through. So how do you help women like us? So there's, there's two parts to that, um, and it's the, the mind and the body. So what we need to do is we need to understand that uh, it is going to be challenging. So we, we know how to help. We, we on, and this is like no ego at all, but we've done this now for 20 plus years, met with well over a quarter million of people now uh, in terms of appointments. We've helped hundreds of thousands of other people. Yeah. So we, we have the protocols that we know work. However, if someone doesn't follow protocols and they're not consistent, it doesn't matter. Like they're just not going to get those results. So a big part of that is just understanding that uh, you're not the guinea pig, that if you follow this, it will work. We need you to be consistent, but we also need to understand that at the same time, we need to be working on you, right? So we might give you the nutrition plan, the nutritional supplements, the specific types of detox based things for the liver pathways, all these different types of things that are very simple to complete. But Again, if you are not sleeping, if you are not getting some sunshine or fresh air, then it's not going to be able to stick like you want it to and also last for life. Because you might be on a protocol that lasts 12 to 16 weeks to rebalance your gut. Good. But what do we do after that? We have to be able to now enjoy and maintain those results. And so we, we just teach, again, it, it's, doesn't, it's, it's the um, crawl, walk, run-based theory. So everything is progressive. In your first month, you don't need to do it all. You just need to begin to implement. And I, and I really, these are things that I implemented in my own family. So for example, my wife, uh, she works as a real estate uh, broker, uh, but she also takes care of our family. She manages everything for our household. She does a great job. She cooks dinner for us, healthy meals, all these things. But I, I said to her, listen, you're, you're too stressed. There's too much going on. We need you to take back a little bit of time for you. I'm and so surprised you survived that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I try to I try to hedge it in a nice way, in a calm way. But I said, you know, I said part of my job is to make sure that I alleviate some stress for you. You know, yes. what can I do to help you? And one thing, so I said, what is it that would bring you more happiness, more joy, uh, more peace? And and one of those things is that she likes a little quiet time to herself. Obviously, that makes sense. She's working with clients all day. She's with our kids all day as well. So what do we do to help that? Well, uh, in the morning now, because my my time for me can be done inside my home, inside my house, no big deal. So I said, hey, while I'm getting ready, while I'm doing these things, you go for a walk. That's what you enjoy doing. So she's outside getting fresh air, going for a walk each morning. 
And that's been, a, a, I think, a big thing for her as well. So it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. But now she got some quiet time for herself. Now she comes back. You know, kids are getting ready for school. They're having breakfast, all those things. I can help with that before I leave. So a lot of it is just having those conversations with your partner, with your spouse, whoever it might be, or your kids. Ken, Ken you can talk with your kids. After the age of like six years old, they're going to understand like, hey, this is what we need to do as a family. So having those conversations is really important. And uh, I just always love to start with or give one of my quotes uh, from Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn said this, I'll take care of me for you if you take care of you for me. Yes. And that is what I always try to share. Meaning like, yes. I don't know exactly what my wife needs. She does though. So mm -hmm. she needs to take care of her needs and it's my job to support her. And then hopefully vice versa. I'll take care of me for her and she'll do the same. And so it's such an important thing because we want the other person to know what we need, but especially like with a lot of men and women, we just don't know. Like we don't understand it. We don't really need it. So if that person can empower themselves to do that, for themselves with the support of their spouse, partner, family, I think that's that's the best of all worlds. That's what I've seen to work really well. I completely agree. I totally agree because like we've said earlier, it definitely starts with you. For you to create change in your family, in your household, you want to model you know, a healthy example for your kids, then start to do the work. I have to get into your wife and for so many reasons because she's going to be the one that we relate to the most. What road bumps? So you're asking her, what do you need? And a good amount of husbands do that. Just tell me what you need. Tell me what you need and I'll give it to you. And what I find working with women, working with couples is women will tell them what they need and then it'll work for like five seconds and then it stops. And then I hate to say it. I know you ladies are going to totally hate me, but I know you love me deep down inside. <laughs> The truth is we come with, up with excuses, you know, well, yeah, it worked for like two days, but you know, um, the kids really needed me. And one of them woke up earlier and they were crying and you didn't wake up when they were crying or you didn't do it right. Or, you know, I got back and it wasn't in time for breakfast and you gave them cereal. Right. And it turns into this blaming game. Ladies, you got to admit that. Yes, it turns into this blaming game. What road bumps did your wife have? I don't know if she'll, you can share without her killing you, but ro what road months did she have starting this new practice? Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that uh, I've, I've just done a lot of study on psychology, obviously not to your level, but this is so important because the psychological makeup. Now, again, this is just generalization. I know that it's not for all men, all women yeah. It's just men intuitively, uh, and innately are just trying to solve problems. Yes. And we're doing that out of love though, because we see someone upset, we see them struggling and we're saying, how can we take this pain away from you? Because we're very simple creatures and that's really all we know how to do. We, we really, we don't have the sit now again, not all men, but we don't have the same ability to empathize. We don't even have the same ability to listen. We want to, but at the same time, we are actively thinking about how can I alleviate this problem? How can I alleviate this pain? So I've learned over the years that it's not always about solving that problem in that moment. Yeah. So that's what I, I don't do that anymore. However, I still want to, because that is part of my <laughs> wiring, you know? And so I say, okay, this is not necessarily about that at that moment. Maybe we'll get there in a month or two months or whenever it might be. And so at the same time though, you know, again, if I'm just trying to speak honestly, um, I want to empower women. I have two daughters, they're seven and nine years old. Yeah, I, I want them to know that it they can create anything that they want with their life. Now, a lot of times when you have kids, you have family, you have so many responsibilities. There's no doubt about that. But I do believe, just as you said before, you can be a role model then for your children, that you can do it all. But there's this overall feeling of overwhelm, right? And, and anxiousness. There's just too much to do. You have too much responsibility. I found this, and this was included with my wife, and I don't think that she'll, she might kill me for saying this, but <laughs> we are often worrying about problems that have not come to fruition. Thank you. Yes. Let's wait you. for the problem to come to fruition. I mean, we can, we can work on contingency plans. Don't get me wrong. Yes, but yes. We, we're living in a state of the future that has not actually happened, which causes anxiety. So if we can just stay more present and we can ask for more of what we do want, I think we'll get that. And just like you said, and then when you do get it, though, deep breath say, this is a new space for me. I need to figure it out, but begin to own it. And, and I think that that's a big thing. No, I love that you said that. It is. It's, it's for us women, 
it is very important that we're intentional. And we all want to be. We all definitely want to be. We want to be intentional when we're, when we're with our husbands. We want to be intentional when, when we're, we're with our kids. However, those stories come up and build up in our head. And those stories turn into us catastrophizing, us personalizing, maybe something our husband said. You know, we go into also this, um, this another distorted thought. We go into emotional reasoning where everything, everything is based off of how we're feeling emotionally. And we tend to act out. If we can understand that component, which I'm so glad you shared, that men are there I shouldn't say men are there to provide answers, but men are on a mission to provide answers because they do want to take that pain away from us. If we can understand that, then we will no longer, we'll kind of veer away from personalizing everything that a man's telling us and instead really listen, listen to understand. He's trying to help me right now. He's not trying to fix me. He's trying to help me and be my partner So if I'm willing to go ahead and do something different, he might not do it the way I want him to do it. He may go ahead and mess up and, and, and fail every now and then, but hell, so did you, so did you let go of the responsibilities, let his ass go ahead and take over and enjoy yourself. So once your wife started to adopt this new habit, what did you notice changed? One thing I will say with that, and I, and I said this to my wife, I said, uh, if you're upset at me, please let me know what you're upset about. I said, because I'm honestly an open book. I'm willing to change. I have no problems with that at all. I want, uh, and we do, we have a great marriage. We have a great relationship. We've got two yeah. great daughters. We were aligned on everything that we want for our family. So I said, hey, if there's a, a misunderstanding, I want you to know that I didn't do anything intentionally. And I, and I use this quote, I, I, and I wish I could attribute it to who, it, who said it first, but don't blame uh, don't attribute to malice what you can just simply blame on ignorance. So if your if your partner you does something, that one too. <laughs> if you do something crazy, like if your partner does something crazy or says something crazy, so like like did they actually mean that or do they just not know exactly what I'm looking for right now? Because they're most likely, if they love you, they're most likely not looking to hurt you. Now I know some people have different types of relationships. They, yeah. There's yeah. A, the ego involved, and there's not enough self worth, and there's security issues. I get it. Like. I've, I've learned a lot about inner child based issues and you need to work through those. There's no doubt about it. Okay. Um, but at the same time, they're there. And if you look at the entire Eastern based philosophy and, and even religions, there's a male energy and a female energy, and you can call it whatever you want. It's just a yin and a yang. There's just two different things in the universe, and the world. And what I've realized is again, men being uh, oftentimes, and again, this is true, men are oftentimes less emotionally available. It's not that we want to be less emotionally available. It's just that for the most part, we are wired to go out and try to fix things in the world, to try to solve problems. And women can do that too. But it is often from a much deeper, more compassionate standing where men are like a hammer with a nail. It's like, oh, okay, this needs fixing. Let me just get out a nail and a hammer and just Put, you know, put that back in to fix the leak in the roof. That we're much more simple creatures, right? So I think we need to be like, we need to understand like, hey, when I'm talking to my, you know, partner or spouse, whoever it might be, uh, he's not even at the level that I am uh, in terms of not, not knowledge, but in terms of intuitive, emotional based understanding of what the problem actually is. The problem is deeper than the superficial fix. And I think that if you start the conversation with, I don't know if I'm being heard right now. I would love to be able to explain this better. This is actually what I'm looking for instead of, you know, we're not trying to solve the problem. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So when we begin working with you, because now that you've mentioned all of that, holy moly, okay, this guy totally gets us. He totally, (laughs) totally gets us. So once we go to your website, or get in contact with you, what should we expect as women? Like, what would be our first step? Well, so the if you go to my website, you can obviously, it's three years ago, uh, I published The Rain Barrel Effect. That is my book that essentially teaches people how we become unwell, how we gain the weight, why we feel like we're aging at a much more rapid weight. And then I give away my exact de-stress protocol of what I use in my private practice. Then that can be customized for each individual. And that's done with at-home lab testing, simple saliva test, maybe a a blood uh, finger prick test or a urine-based sample to look at your vitamin levels, your mineral levels, your hormone levels. Because one thing we have to understand is that 
we're telling a lot of women, like, let's say my wife, hey, you know what? You love just a little bit of your quiet time, your alone time. You go for a walk. Like, that's totally understandable. You should do that. However, if you wake up in the morning and you're groggy, you have brain fog, you have no energy, you feel bloated during the day, well, you're not going to want to exercise. You're not going to want to move your body. You're not going to want to try to eat healthy, except for, except uh, especially if a lot of those healthy vegetables and things cause you bloating. So yeah. that's why the health part of it is really important. And that's why I love when psychologists, psychiatrists work with natural health-based providers, because if you can fix someone's health and hormones, yeah. it makes it a whole lot easier than Total to difference. empower women to be able to do those things. So that's what we do on our end. We give women back their energy, their uh, mood. Because again, if you have gut issues, you feel bloated. Well, your gut has its own mind. It's called the enteric nervous system. And it connects um, through the vagus nerve right up to your actual mind, your actual brain. So that can be causing anxiety and worry if you're always feeling, you know, queasy your stomach or bloated, et cetera. So that's what we do. We fix those things. Uh, we typically love to start with at-home lab testing if possible. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. And it gets right down to the reasons why people are unwell. And that's either a deficiency in something, which is uh, a lot of women are low in progesterone and they're normal or normal high in estrogen. And that's called estrogen dominance. Because of estrogen dominance, they feel, especially seven days or so, 10 days before their cycle, they feel lower mood. They feel anxious. They might feel a little bloated. Their skin might get more oily. Uh, they have trouble sleeping during those times. They start to gain water weight and yeah. more irritability. So we you say, okay. Are, you are perfectly describing the woman. Yes. <laughs> and so you say, well, you know, that's not, that, that is an imbalance that happens because of hormones during the luteal phase of the cycle. And that can be fixed. And if we fix that, and then that five days or that seven days when you're not usually feeling as well, you feel more cool, calm, and collected because now your body's more balanced at a hormonal level. Well, then the discussions with your spouse or your family and just for yourself are more you, right? They're more who yeah. you are as an individual. Your hormones can affect you. And so what we do is we just like to give women back that ability to be them and to live a life with energy and without brain fog and more ambition and more drives so that can maybe start that you know business that they want to do or go back and, and figure out what their passions are. And they're more lit up. That's that's exactly what life is meant to be, right? Enjoying it. So that's what we do. Everything comes with a customized protocol built for them. And and uh, again, it takes about twelve weeks or so to to get those results. That's what we found in our practice. Uh, but over that time, you're learning, you're growing, and uh, it's it's really a nice journey because the thing is, you get to keep those results then for life. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love that. Twelve weeks, twelve weeks, and do you? Not a, I shouldn't say a brand new you, but a, a, I want to say a well you. The best version of you. Yes, yes exactly. absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I love that. Huh. Huh. Maybe we might do a part two after I do this myself. <laughs> well, I'm, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, you have to try this right for yourself and you see yeah. how it fits. And we work with actually a lot of practitioners like yourself that are experts in their space. And they say, okay, we're going to add this to our program because, yeah. you know, a, as a professional, you say, I want the best for my clients, my patients. Right. And that's the, again, the entire mind body, which is also why we partner with people like you to say, listen, our job is not to begin to heal the inner child, to begin to do these types of things. That's beyond our scope of practice. However, what we can do is get this person to baseline foundational wellness. And then it's so much easier than to heal the subconscious mind to begin to rewire and reprogram uh, this person's childhood beliefs of money, finance, security, relationships, et cetera. Yeah, that's really big for us um, clinicians as well. You know, during our initial intake, you know, we do a um, what's called a psychosocial assessment and we look at full background, you know, history, um, family, you know, everything that's gone on. But one of the main, main things we look at is when was your last physical? You know, how often, what things are, what things are currently going on in your body? Because a good amount of um, anxiety might be attributed to some form of health issues, you know, so we want to definitely make sure they run those health exams, you know, so that we rule out anxiety, depression, or anything else. I don't want to provide, you know, I don't want to give somebody a heavy diagnosis without looking at or working with a physician to find out what might be some attributing factors to these symptoms. So I love that. I love yeah, and that. Only, the only thing I would caution against is that you're 
your usual medical doctor, PCP, is not going to know any of this. It's not what they went to school for, right? So they went to school to become a medical doctor and diagnose disease. So if you go and you get your blood work done once a year, which you should, so I'm absolutely recommending that. I believe everyone should have a medical doctor and an integrative health practitioner. So they're going to diagnose disease if you have high cholesterol, you know, high LDL, if you have high homocysteine. Okay, so that's fine. But then also the reason is, well, why do you have that, right? So then you want to work with the integrative health practitioner. But a medical doctor now doesn't even test for vitamin D. And we know vitamin D, low vitamin D leads to depression. I mean, it's there's a clinical correlation when you get someone's vitamin D levels optimized, not just 30 like on a blood lab test, but actually between 50 and 70 nanograms per milliliter, a lot of depression begins to, uh, if not go away, but greatly decrease, which is enough then to take it to the next level, right? Because not everything has to happen from one vitamin, one mineral yeah. or one modality of health. But if you can just get a little benefit here, and like I talked about with de-stress protocol, you don't want to be perfect in any of those eight areas. You don't need to be. But if you're 80% in all of those areas, most of those areas, that's how you get the results you're looking for. It's too hard to be perfect. But if you're pretty good, that's going to be enough. Oh, I would love that. I I, I would definitely... You're right. You're right. Most, most MDs, they do not cover integrative health. At, most of them aren't trained in that. You have very, very few, very few, and a good amount of them, ladies, I hate to tell you this, but a good amount of them don't take insurance. Kind of like clinicians. You get a really good clinician, more than likely they're not going to take insurance. And the reason why is because they know how much they're worth. They know their, they know what they're worth and they're here to go ahead and go in depth. Insurance companies do not allow us to practice And I'm sure with you as well, insurance companies do not allow us to practice the way, not that we want to practice, but the way we need to practice to get you the results that you want, right? 100%. I mean, that's the main reason. So uh, even when I was first starting out, I uh, decided to become board certified rather than licensed. And the reason is I would have to do electronic medical records. I would have to do a specific type of exam. And it's not, this this had nothing to do with helping a person get well. It was just based on insurance-based policies, premiums. And and I said, this is never going to change. It's always going to do. And so I said, how do I help this person get well? How do I help them heal? That's all that matters to me. And so that's what we do. And it also though, um, it's not a bad thing because when you invest in your health, whether it be uh, psychologically or physically, you are more committed to it. We've seen that over and over and people get better results. And that that's really the bottom line as well. It's an investment. It's an investment. I've seen the same thing happen the minute we... Um, when I opened up my practice and we were private pay, I used to work for a group practice as an intern and we took insurance. It was totally different. You fork up the money you fork up. Yeah, you're invested. You're showing up to your appointments on time. You're making sure that you are doing everything that's asked of you. And the level of progress is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's totally night and day. The people that I work with when they started are not the same people when they finish. So that's one thing that I appreciate about your services as well is just there is that level of investment, but you are investing with somebody who absolutely knows their shit and wants to help you, wants to go ahead and do it the right way, do it the healthy way. So how do we, how do we find you? So my main website is stephencabral.com and it's Stephen with a PH. I'm sure maybe in the show notes, um, you could link that up Uh, on Instagram. That's the main channel where I'm at. Uh, Again, it's Stephen Cabral. And I have a daily podcast called The Cabral Concept. And that's pretty much everywhere. My website, Apple, et cetera. And that's, that's my main goal. So my goal is to teach. So I have my book. I have the podcast. I have assessments on my website for gut health. And they're all free. And so what I want people to do is simply take the first step. So you might not be interested yet in investing in an at-home lab test or functional medicine-based detox or or any of these things. And that's okay. So again, there's a certain level of education that you want to get first, just learn more about it. And then when you're ready to take the next step, we'll be there to help you take that next step. And um, that's our commitment, especially in 2022 going forward. We're doing so many big things in the wellness-based industry to really allow more people around the world to access these life-changing at-home lab tests and protocols. And we also open source it for practitioners. So if there's practitioners listening, uh, we literally give away, meaning we teach you exactly what we do at the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute or right at Equalife, uh, which are the two main websites that uh, share with you, hey, this is what we do for gut health. This is the test. These are the protocols. And, and we just share all of that because, you know, when you think about it, uh, how many 
tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people need our help. And of course, we can only work with so many of those. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. One last question that I always ask all my guests. What are you currently doing right now to live the life you want to live? For me, and and that's why I know a a lot of us uh, were hit hard and not happy about the pandemic and all of that. I totally get it. And and we were all went through that, but it's really revolutionized how I work and the time I spend with my family. I'm sure you get that a lot, but it's the truth. It's the one major change. So I used to travel twice a month, every single month uh, to speak all over the world. And now once a month, maximum, if that, and that's because, and I also have a rule only two nights away from my two daughters, That's it for the month. And what it does is it enables me to say, this is the stop to my day. This is the start to my day Uh, that, you know, I used to leave for work pretty early in the morning. Now I make sure that I'm home with my daughters. My wife, again, should have that time to herself. I make my daughters breakfast. Like even this morning, we just hung out, played cards for, because they were up a little bit early. So we played Uno together while having some breakfast. And so that's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I still get the same amount of work done. Um, I just condense it in a tighter day. And when my kids go to bed, I can always check to see if there's anything else I have to do. But that's been a game changer. Um, I'm doing just as much work, just as much my family, but enjoying life a whole lot more. Nice. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on. You have given us a wealth of information. I appreciate you having me on and uh, thank you so much. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I want to personally invite you to join our girl gang. It's a free Facebook community for women just like you. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash empowered and unapologetic. See you there. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Hey there, this is Casey McGuire Davidson, host of the Hello Someday podcast. I'm an ex-red wine girl turned life coach who helps busy women change their relationship with alcohol. I spent 20 years climbing the corporate ladder while drinking a bottle of wine a night to unwind. In the Hello Someday podcast, my goal is to teach you the tried and true secrets of creating and living a life you don't want to escape from. Each week, I'll bring you tools, lessons, and conversations to help you drink less and live more. I'll teach you how to navigate our drinking obsessed culture without a buzz and how to turn the decision to stop drinking from your worst case scenario to the best decision of your life. You can find new episodes of the Hello Someday podcast every Thursday, wherever you listen. And I hope you check it out. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, 
listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. I'm Madeline and I'm the host of the Happiest Sober podcast. I got sober in my 20s after a decade of gray area drinking and the greatest plot twist of all time was realizing that alcohol, the thing that I thought made my life the most happy and fun and exciting, was actually the exact thing preventing me from living my happiest and best life. My mom is 40 years sober and she joins me on my podcast very often. I like to call her my part-time co-host and I also bring you solo episodes where I share my top tips, tricks, and mindset shifts in sobriety and lots of how to's for navigating all the things sober from weddings to parties to holidays to bachelorette parties to trips. I'm also joined by so many guests who come on and share their sober stories and they're all so, so inspiring. I'm here to show you that life doesn't end when you quit drinking. In fact, it's very much the opposite. And no matter what your relationship was with alcohol, life can be the absolute happiest when you're sober. New episodes come out every Tuesday. You can listen to Happiest Sober Podcast wherever you get your podcasts.